We already know about the premium guys like a Darren Payne, like a Saquon Barkley, like a Draymond Jones, like Orlando Brown Jr., Jawan Taylor, TJ Edwards, etc., etc. We already know who these premium top of the market guys are, but in this video, I'll be going through five under the radar players the Chicago Bears might be signing this year in free agency what's going on guys i'm back with another chicago bears offseason discussion video which again i'll be doing pretty frequently in the next few months as we cover the 2023 chicago bears offseason probably the most important offseason in the history of the franchise i'm not just saying this because i'm a bears fan but because the bears have the most assets in the nfl by a significant margin both in the draft and in free agency too and obviously we had the worst team in the nfl last year so we have to improve significantly on both sides of the football so a lot of Bears content coming your way in the next month. Subscribe if you want more of that. But in this video, I'll be talking about five under-the-radar players that the Chicago Bears might be signing in the upcoming free agency. Now, obviously, the Bears have a lot of money to spend. We have over, you know, almost $100 million to spend. So we will be signing a lot of these higher-tier premium guys because we have that much money to spend. So at least three or four guys, I would say, would be splash top of the market signings because again we have that much money to spend but we're also going to be spending some on under the radar wave two wave three guys because you can't just spend all of your money on wave one guys that's just not how it works even if you have a lot of money like the chicago bears okay every smart front office in the nfl they try to get some value signings no matter how much money they have okay some guys that for whatever reason are getting kind of overlooked you know whether that be for injury or whether that be for lack of starting level play or lack of consistent production whatever the case may be the wave two wave three guys end up sometimes giving you the best value signings the best value deals of the entire free agency because obviously you're not spending as much money on these guys not risking as much into these guys and the chicago bears in the past we've hit it big on some value deals for example akeem hicks back in 2016 signed for a two-year 10 million dollar contract which turned into one of the best bargains in chicago bears history okay obviously akeem hicks got extended after that but the first couple years of his career with the Chicago Bears only getting paid $5 million per year. A fantastic bargain for Ryan Pace. Now last year, you know, Ryan Poles tried to get some of these bargains, but they did not work out very well. Byron Pringle did not work out. Lucas Patrick really did not work out. Um, Riley Reef was not that good either. So like the bargain deals did not work last year, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't go after more of them this year as, you know, supplementary pieces to our main big fishes in free agency okay and hopefully we get at least some of these guys to work out this time around as compared to last year but without further ado guys let me get into my list now okay so five guys i think that could be fantastic value additions to the chicago bears guys that i feel like most bears fans are not talking about right now but let's just get into it all right the first guy on my list is going to be ed rusher obonia okorunkwo from the houston texans whose projected contract value is going to be about two year 11 million dollars total with a guaranteed value of $6.75 million. Kind of similar to the Alquadine Muhammad contract and that you can get out of this after one year if he ends up not doing that well for you next year. So it's going to be a low risk signing because he's only had one good year really last year. He did break out in the second half though. So still a you know player on the upswing of his career, right? He's only 27 years old last year with the Texans. He finished the year with five total sacks, 36 total pressures, 27 run stops, 25 hurries. He had 31 solo tackles, forced to fumble too. So very productive in the second half of last year. And that's the thing, guys. Like He's not been very productive throughout his career so far in the NFL. He's a fifth-round pick by the Rams back in 2018. Didn't get much playing time with them, obviously, because they had a pretty good team there so he didn't get too much snapped he was a rotational guy but last year he goes to the houston texans gets an opportunity obviously because the texans didn't have much roster talent there and he made the most out of the opportunities he was given okay he started eight games again most of them down the stretch and when he actually did start he produced you know big time for the texans again in the second half of last year now the question is is that sustainable throughout an entire you know 17 game season right because we don't know that yet but for a cheap you know, two-year contract that's not going to break the bank for us. This would be a solid addition to add to the pass rushing mix. Okay, maybe a rotational guy or maybe even a starter if he wins a starting job with whatever rookies he has to compete with, whatever other signings he has to compete with, right? Because we are going to be signing a lot of other players also probably on the D-line. But Okorunko brings speed, athleticism, and explosion to our defensive line, which, you know, are traits that Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus definitely value in their defensive linemen. So scheme fit, it makes sense because he played in a 4-3 with the Texans he had production down the stretch of last year so I think this is the guy that the Bears could potentially bet on and hopefully cash out on okay on a cheap deal that could turn into a fantastic value signing like Akeem Hicks was for the Chicago Bears back in the Ryan Pace regime all right the next guy on my list is going to be another ad rusher Arden Key from the Jacksonville Jaguars his projected contract value is going to be two years 18.5 million dollars with a guarantee of 11.5 million dollars so slightly more expensive 
um you know version of obonia okoronkwa because he is younger he had a more productive last two years so unlike obonia he had two productive years in a row so with the Niners in 2021 he had 6.5 sacks 36 total pressures then last year with the Jaguars he also had a productive year as a rotational guy so five sacks last year and 44 total pressures so on a per snap basis he got more pressures and overall he also got more pressures in totality as compared to 2021 so definitely the best year of his career last year the question is again is that sustainable as a starter because he's only been a starter one year of his career his rookie year with the Raiders okay when he got drafted in the third round of the 2018 NFL draft he definitely did not work out with the Raiders he only started 10 games there ended up being a rotational guy afterwards but then got cut after 2020 where he landed with the Niners in 2021 and that's when he started to break out and really you know refine and find himself as a pass rusher in this league now he was you know viewed as a project coming out of LSU like a lot of people thought he would not be ready to start right away and maybe that's what's happened so far in his career like Year one, year two, year three, he wasn't ready to, you know, really start. He struggled with, you know, finding himself as a pass rusher, as a run defender, did not have a variety of moves to go to, very one dimensional. But recently, getting coached up by better defensive line coaches like the Niners have, like the Jaguars have, he's been able to be consistently productive for the first time in his career. And maybe that's going to continue going forward, right? Because again, he's only 26 years old. So still a lot of room to grow, still a lot of areas to improve on. But a guy that's definitely, you know, playing his best football right now and, it could make sense for the Bears to cash in on this on a still relatively cheap deal for a pass rusher. You know, pass rushers do get paid a lot. So only paying him about $9 million per year could be one of the best value signings of free agency. Let's look at a linebacker now. Okay, so linebacker Aziz al Shair from the San Francisco 49ers. His projected contract value is two years, $8 million with a guarantee of $4.25 million. The Bears need linebacking help. Obviously, like we know, we only have really Jack Sanborn locked in as a sure starter for next year and he's not making much money at all and Aziz al Shayer also would be a pretty cheap signing because with the Niners you know, the Niners already have so many great linebackers they had Fred Warner they had Ray Greenlaw starting so al Shayer probably did not get the most recognition there but he definitely had production both last year and the year prior now last year he did get injured so he only started in nine games the year before he started in 13 games so definitely has an injury risk so you'd have to make sure he's fully healthy before you sign him but when healthy he has been one of the best run defending linebackers in the NFL and for a Bears defense that needs more guys that can defend against the run this would be a pretty solid scheme fit, okay? He played Sam Backer for the Niners. Last year, he had 44 total tackles, 10 total run stops, but the year prior when he was actually fully healthy, he had 102 total tackles and 47 run stops. So really doing well against the run, okay? Consistently being the guy that brings the ball carrier down, you know, by himself or with other guys around him, you know, surrounding him. So I think this will be a guy that Ibrafus would really love, okay? A guy that can hit hard, that is physical, a willing tackler, a sure tackler, and we need more of those on the Chicago Bears. He's also only 25 years old, so definitely has a lot of room to grow and get better, and he would fit in with the Bears' long-term plans really well because obviously our entire team is super young. So I think on a two-year deal, you know, obviously not going to break the bank. This will be a pretty solid signing for the Bears if they're not able to get, you know, a higher-tier linebacker or like a higher-tier um you know draft prospect linebacker let's look at the offensive side of the football now okay so looking at tackle andre dillard his projected contract value is two years 10.35 million dollars with 6.5 million guaranteed dillard has been the sixth offensive lineman basically for the eagles okay filling in wherever he has to okay at guard at tackle left tackle left guard right guard he's played all over for the philadelphia eagles he was actually a first round pick of the Eagles back in 2019 but because the Eagles have just so many great offensive linemen he hasn't gotten many opportunities to start like he would with a team like the Chicago Bears okay obviously the Bears do not have a good offensive line and do not have great depth either so he would be a fantastic addition to the Bears offensive line whether he starts or not okay so if the Bears want to go after a high priced tackle like Orlando Brown Jr or like a Kayla McGarry or like a Jawan Taylor or whoever they want to go after they can still do that in free agency or the draft and still get a guy like Andre Dillard because he could be that sixth offensive lineman also for the Chicago Bears and with how many injuries we seem to have every single year he could probably be starting a lot of the games for us right because that's how it seems to always turn out like somebody gets injured and having a guy like Andre Dillard who can pass protect really really well as a depth option could be a fantastic signing for the Chicago Bears. In 2021, he actually played left tackle 337 total snaps and only allowed one sack the entire year for the Eagles. So filling in a left tackle, he can definitely do that. He also filled in that right tackle too. Early on in his career, he's played left guard and right guard too and been a pretty good pass blocker all around. Okay, his best work probably has been 
as a left tackle so maybe you keep him as a backup left tackle maybe you give him a chance to win the starting right tackle job and again if we have injuries wherever he could play wherever he has to because that's how versatile he is and you need guys that are versatile on the offensive line like Andre Dillard and obviously our assistant general manager Ian Cunningham knows Andre Dillard pretty well probably because he helped scout him back when he was with the Eagles in 2019 so all around just a great pass blocking offensive lineman that could be a very solid addition to the Chicago Bears offensive line for a pretty cheap price and lastly let's look at a receiver Olamide Zacchaeus from the Atlanta Falcons His projected contract value is two years eight million dollars with a guarantee of four million dollars now he was a reliable wide receiver number three wide receiver number four and sometimes number two for the Atlanta Falcons obviously the Falcons did not have much receiver talent last year so he had to step up last year and he definitely did that finished the year with 533 receiving yards and 40 receptions an average of 13.3 yards per reception so definitely a bigger play guy that was you know very active going down the field uh, the year prior he had 406 receiving yards on 31 receptions and you know obviously like I mentioned last year he had to start 13 games and he was a reliable contributor for the Falcons the Falcons did not have a very proficient passing attack partly because the quarterback play was so bad with Marcus Mariota and eventually Desmond Ritter starting but he still put up over 530 yards and was a very productive guy the entire year okay even with bad quarterback play sometimes and with the Chicago Bears he'd probably be a wide receiver number four or number five for us and that's the thing guys like as a receiver number four or number five that's his best role okay he's not going to be a number one or a number two but as a complimentary piece that could see the field every so often maybe you know a couple times a game put him on a streak going down the field or you know send him on a slant or something because he has produced after the catch as well okay over 5.6 yards after the catch he could provide the bears with value okay he's five foot eight weighs 194 pounds so definitely a bigger thickly built guy that is going to be able to withstand hits in the open field and you know again a guy that has a depth option for justin fields could be really good for us because last year we didn't have much depth at the receiver spot at all okay we didn't have good starters to begin with but even the depth also obviously was not that good down the stretch we had random guys practice squad guys that had to start games for us in the nfl which is not ideal if you are not trying to tank which obviously next year we are not going to be trying to tank so getting zacchaeus in here as a reliable wide receiver number four number five on a cheap deal would be making a lot of sense for both sides all right there you have it those are five guys i feel like would be fantastic value additions for the chicago bears um let me know down below in the comments if you think there's any others out there that i've missed in this video or other guys that you just have your eye on that you think the bears should be signing that are not you know considered to be day one guys let me know down below again i cannot wait until free agency actually starts only about three more weeks now hope you guys have a good sunday as always bear down <laughs>